Hey, what's going on, Mark? Oh, man, all kinds of stuff. There's just too much to go on. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, we're recording this a day early. We, uh, I got big things going on tomorrow, so I needed to take uh, tomorrow night off. So we decided we would switch the uh, old schedule around a little bit. But uh, other than that, we're good. Well, good. Um, I know you have a busy week ahead, so. Yeah. Um, and Monday feels quite comfortable. It, smells, it's, it smells Monday, but it's okay. Yeah. I think we'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were talking about some something to tell me earlier on. Uh, did you want to save it for later or you wanted oh, to I tell can, me? I, I can do it now. It's just a weird story and we're going to see where this goes. Well, you know, it always happens that we don't know what happens when we start off down a road. So, yeah, we don't know where this is going to go. So uh, this was Friday night. And this is everything I'm fixing to tell you is 100% true. And I don't know any names other than mine and my wife's. Okay. So it's Friday night. We go to bed. Everything's great. And I wake up at about 1.30 in the morning. Um, sweating like crazy. I'd for, Normally I shut off the heater. And I'm sweating like crazy. I'd forgotten to turn it off. Evidently, my pre-night routine was interrupted somehow. So I go in and I get a going to go in and get a glass of water and go turn the heater off. And I come walking out of the bedroom and I'm heading towards the kitchen to get a glass of water. And the way our house is arranged, you come out our bedroom door, you're in the dining room. Living room is off to the right. Kitchen's off to the left. And there's a pass-through, so you can talk back and forth between the kitchen and the living room. Okay. Well, I step out of the bedroom, and I head over to the kitchen. And just out of the corner of my eye, I see something weird, and I hear something. And I turn and look, and there is a guy laying back in my wife's recliner, <laughs> shoes off, sound asleep, snoring. In your house. In my house. In your now, recliner. In, in my wife's recliner. At there what, is, at there what, is a distinction. <laughs> what time of day? 1.30 in the morning. And holes oh, at... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I... Everything you're thinking right now, I was thinking. It's, a, it's like a okay. brain blowing... Yes. So I look, because I'm thinking, you didn't just see that. I walk into the kitchen a little further and I'm looking through that pass through and <laughs> in my, in my still asleep head, I'm like, is that my nephew? No, that's not my nephew. Is that who the hell is that? <laughs> because I fell asleep before Linda did. And I thought, I don't know, maybe my nephew came over and he just, for some reason decided to crash here. Right. right. You're standing. So you're standing, um, in the kitchen, looking through the pass-through towards that sofa recliner, uh -huh. and it's 1.30 at night, and you are calculating, I would assume, very rapidly, even though you're asleep, mm -hmm. what the heck is going on. Exactly. Yeah. What the, who the hell is, what the, who the, so I slink back into the bedroom, and I go wake up Linda. Did you let somebody in the house? She thought I was having a bad dream. She's like, roll over, go back to sleep. I'm like, I'm asking you, did you let somebody in the house? She says, no. What? And I said, okay, we got Whoa. a problem. So we're trying to talk quiet. I said, okay, then we got a problem. There is somebody in our living room sleeping in your recliner. She thought I was having a dream. I said, Whoa. I'm serious as a heart attack. Dude, I'm my mind is blown. I, I don't want to keep dragging, but this is part of the fun. You're telling me that you... Holy, okay, I got to ask you this before you continue. This okay. is good. So, <laughs> so, so you, number one, you're, fi you're walking back to your, your, your bedroom thinking this has to be a family member. And I would just wasn't, and as you're walking back, you still have that doubt. And then you ask your wife. And once she tells you, no, you're crazy. Go back to sleep. You're like, holy smokes. Yeah. I'm like, this is real. It just got real. <laughs> Oh, crap. Right? 
Meanwhile, back at the ranch out in the living room, this dude is snoring. And I mean loud. So I'm like, okay, stay quiet. I'm like, get dressed. So we both throw some clothes on. I grab the phone. I step into the bathroom. I call 911. Meanwhile, my wife reaches over into the nightstand and pulls out the equalizer. <laughs> so I'm talking to the dude and I'm being very quiet. All right. This dude's asleep. Let's not confront. So the sheriffs are on their way. I live in a small town. We had four cars there within two minutes of me hitting the buttons. Oh, wow. And the Where dispatcher, we, 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 we got outside. We, we slunk through the kitchen out the back door and got outside. Wait, 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 wait. So you were in the bathroom with the phone. Uh huh. By the time you got on the call, they were already almost just about there. In other yeah, words, there, there was one sitting. Uh, now this is one thirty in the morning in a town of five thousand people. There ain't a lot going on. Okay, so one happened to be sitting about a mile down the road from us, and another one was coming in our direction down another main road, and he was about three quarters of a mile away. When you exited. Mm -hmm. Through the kitchen, mm -hmm. did your wife, because she had not seen the guy, did she right. sneak a peek and see right. who? Yo, yeah, she looked. We both looked because the dude is snoring. I mean, he's <laughs> calling logs. This dude was dead out, and we're trying to be quiet as church mice. We're sneaking through the house, right? You know, I come out, I, I go in, I dial 911 and everything, and I'm telling the guy, this is where I live. This is what's going on. I turn around and I see that she's dressed. Okay, fine. And we, uh, I said, let's get out. And we head out the door and um, she's looking at him the whole time we're heading out, you know, <laughs> and we get, we go out and we get out on the front porch and I say to the dispatcher, okay, we are outside. He says, all right, fine. Well, you've got deputies that if they're not there, they'll be here in a few seconds. Is anybody armed? And I said, yes. He said, you need to put it somewhere. I said, I'll take it right now and I'll go put it in one of my, in my shop. And he said, okay, fine. Great. That's a good idea. Keep it out of sight. That way there's no mistakes. So I did. I went over and I put it in my shop and four cars came from out of nowhere about the time I closed the door. Wow. And they come in. Through the they come up and they're like, okay, so who is he? I'm like, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. If you find out, let me know. They never did. But so we all go trooping off into the house and we're kind of standing off back in the kitchen. And I kid you not, it took them a good three minutes to wake this guy up. Holy smokes. He was just gone. Smelling like beer, the whole ding dong thing. Oh my. God. And the cop turns around and looks at me and says, don't you lock your doors? I said, yeah, I lock my doors. But then I remembered I had forgotten to turn the heater off. Maybe I missed a door. Oh. And this guy just kind of staggered on up to the front porch, opened a door, and uh, come in, took off his shoes, laid back in the recliner and went to sleep. Holy smokes. <laughs> to say the least. I cannot <laughs> tell you. N number one. I just want to say this one thing, and I see that Linda is is there. I, number yeah, my one, wife's in the chat over here on YouTube. Yeah. So Linda and for Mark, you will have to send that guy a gift basket because the memories that he has produced for a <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> oh, he, he he probably didn't know he was going to be the subject of a podcast, but I said, "Oh, this is too good," and I, you don't know how hard it was. I haven't mentioned this to anybody outside of our family. You don't know how hard it was for me not to say something to you the day it happened. Holy <laughs> smokes. Well, yeah. I mean, I so, go ahead. I just, so the comeuppance of all this is they finally wake his butt up and, and the th he wasn't dirty, a homeless person, a okay. street person. Okay? okay. He was clean. I mean, he had showered that day at least, and he was a younger guy, and um, he had taken off his shoes and just laid himself down and gone to sleep. How he decided on our house, I have no flicking clue. 
I don't know if he was at a party at a nearby house or something and just wandered off, got lost, thought and went into the wrong house or what? I don't know what he thought was going to happen the next morning, but they got him up. They cuffed him, patted him down, took him outside, put him in the back of the car. And the whole time the sheriffs are going, you know, uh, you're in somebody else's house, you know? And he's like, oh, am I? And they're like, yeah, you know, that's a good way to get shot, don't you? He's like, oh, is it? I mean, this guy was drunk. Holy I mean, bad, smoke. big time. So they got him in the car and they're like, okay, so what do you guys want to do? Um, he, he, you can trespass him. You can, we can get him for breaking and entering. We can do all kinds of stuff here. What do you want to do? And I said, well, I really don't see any purpose in going any further than this. You guys are taking him into protective custody. He says, oh yeah, he'll be 24 hours in the drunk tank. And I says, you know, I, I could be vindictive and I could trespass him or I could get him for breaking and entering or something like that. But I just don't see any purpose in it. And the cop says, well, you know what? I think you're on the right track. We'll take care of it. And he's going to be plenty embarrassed. Believe me. He didn't have a record. They didn't have, they didn't come back with any wants or warrants on him. Wow. So he says he's, he's going to be plenty embarrassed over this. So, uh, so we didn't press any charges or anything. But you can bet my butt is checking those doors every ding dong night. Well, I mean, it's a lesson because <laughs> guess what? And that's a lesson for all of us, to be honest with you. Um, psh, you know, I hear people say, where I live in such and such a place, we leave the doors open because, you know, it's that's how, you know, and we're <clears throat> not here in Miami and sure as hell, I guess, not in your neck of the woods. Well, you know, like I say, I live in a small town of 5,000 people. The next big city is Medford and there's 80,000 people there. I wouldn't even dream of leaving a door unlocked there. You yeah. Know? But out here, yeah, there have been times that I have forgotten. And uh, so, yeah, I do need to be more vigilant on that. Um, and uh, the police, one of the officers said, it wasn't one of you armed. And I said, yeah, it's in the shed. He says, okay, that was a good idea. I says, I'm not going to get it out until after you leave. He says, that's another good idea. <laughs> well, I just, uh, okay, I want to rewind mm -hmm. because I think that the most delicious part of this story mm -hmm. is you. And I don't know, in my mind, I'm picturing you in some, like the, you know, the, the robes, the night robes, you know, like, um, and you're walking out, you know, it's 1.30, and you see this bulk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy, too. <clears throat> he's about, oh, I don't know, Linda may have a different opinion, but I think he was uh, about 5'11", five, five but he was over 200 pounds, and it wasn't fat. He was muscular. He was a stocky kid. I say kid. He's in his, young, he's in his early 20s, if that old. Okay. Okay, so, so <clears throat> young well, guy. Well, you couldn't make out his face, but uh, when he was sleeping on the couch, or yes, you could. Oh yeah, I could. Yeah, I could have short hair and a beard. You know. So I you're could. looking at this. It's one thirty in the morning, and you're frozen. Yeah, you're frozen. And, you're, and, you're, and, you're and like, that's what threw me. <laughs> He's got short hair and a beard, and so does one of my nephews. And I'm like, is that? No, that's not. Is that? No, that's not him. So. The awesome part is <laughs> also that you walk back to the quietly, by the way. Yeah. And you wake up your wife and you explain to her she's looking at you and she and the first thing she says, go back to sleep. Like saying no, she, nope. she thought she thought I was having a bad dream or something. And no, I didn't let nobody in here. And I'm like, All right, get dressed, you know. <laughs> now. But did she did 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 I, I just want to know this also? Did something, uh, a switch uh, from her incredulous, you know, she's sleeping, you wake her up and she's like, come on, man. And from the moment you explained that, <laughs> did, did a switch flip or was she, oh, still, yeah. did she accelerate into it or, or was she still in, in uh, like, when, when I say she did 22 years in the army, I mean, she retired as a Sergeant first class. She was the first female platoon Sergeant in an attack helicopter battalion. She didn't spend her career behind a desk. The train you could see the there was the switch was thrown, the military training clicked in. It's like, okay, cover and concealment. Are we gonna engage or not? And I'm like, all right, Annie Oakley, let's get outside. 
Let's I the mean, cops get paid to be macho. This guy is snoring away. He's not a threat to us. We'll get in trouble if you go out there and just start shooting. You know, you know, I'm it, not. I'm thinking all this. I'm not saying it all. <laughs> I'm just. But I'm. The, let's get outside. <laughs> it's, it's almost. It's almost like the cartoons when like the bear is in the cave in the cartoon and the the cartoon other characters are tippy toeing. The the big big bear is sitting. There. It's so freaky of a situation. Mm -hmm. I can't be begin to tell you, dude, how yeah. freaky of a situation that is. Oh, yeah, serious. Because, I mean, you could see it click over. The tumblers fell into the place in her mind. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the BB in my puzzle is stuck in a corner, and I'm still trying to figure out, am I really seeing somebody snoring in my wife's recliner in the living room? Did, did, you, you, know? did, you, <laughs> did you do one of these wait, 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 with your only eyes? About, only about 100 times. <laughs> So, you know, I'm in there talking to the dude on the uh, on the phone, talking to the dispatcher, waiting for her to get dressed. <clears throat> and meanwhile, I hear the magazine snap into the equalizer. And I'm like, OK, here we go. Shit just got real, 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 <laughs> man. But like I said, he was no threat, you know, but we yeah. were watching for targets of opportunity because we didn't know if he had friends who were less peaceful. So out the door we went. And uh, waited for the uh, county mounties to show up. And, you know, they get paid to be macho. He was not a threat to us. So we just let him be and let them go take care of it. So well, you, I think that that in your circumstance and you, you ju judging that he's a kid, just about kind of sort of or a young, young guy. Yeah. Um, and he's totally drunk and like passed out. Um. <laughs> I think that you did the right thing for the, the guy and hopefully he learned his lesson. But now then again, I've never been so loaded that I forgot what happened ever, ever. I have, and it's not a good feeling. Um, but the, hopefully he will learn a lesson. We'll see. I mean, that's up to him. Well, if, if you wake up, um, if you wake up one one night here in this coming week and he's sitting there watching, you know, prices right on, on TV with a coffee, you know, one of your coffee mugs in his hand, then <laughs> as long as it took them to wake him up, I seriously doubt he remembers what town he was in. So, wow. <laughs> but I'm not kidding you. It took, there were four of them in there surrounding the recliner trying to wake him up. And he's just like, <sighs> Not even doing the, huh, huh, what? No, he not had, none he was, of it. No, he was just out, flat out, out. I'm like, man, I bet you your mom loved to get your butt up from school. I'm going to, I'm going to go out on. <laughs> and I'm you can see up. the cops looking at each other. Do you believe this? Do you believe this guy? Yeah, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. And, and by the way, it's like you won the lottery of drunken guys sleeping on the couch. Because what are the possibilities on this planet out of all the homes in an area you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I think it happened to you guys so that you could tell this beautiful story this evening. Well, you know, I mean, I'm all about stories. You know me. I'd like to talk about stuff. I like to talk about myself. But <laughs> I'd have just soon not had this story to tell. Do, so. you feel, <laughs> do you feel relief now that you've – because you've been holding this for like four days, three, four days. Right. Um, well, I've told we, uh, Linda and I have talked about it with other people, but no, but you wanted to tell, yeah, I wanted to tell all my friends. So we do hangouts nightly and everything. And you don't know how much I wanted to talk about this, but I just didn't dare Did because, you? and Eloy and I, we talked about this before he hit the button and we went live today. Um, we, it's it's real painful for him and I to talk to one another because every time we talk, it's like, man, this would be great for the podcast, you know? So we're afraid to talk to each other. So all we do is pick on other friends, you know? <laughs> it's good material. Every yeah. time, so we, we just got to keep it. Um, wow, dude. That's. Yeah. It, but it, it, what bothers me most is the fact that it took me so long to figure out, yes, this is really happening. Could, like I said, I was dead asleep. I was walking wounded, headed for the kitchen to get a glass of water, and go shut the heater off. So, you know, I'm dead asleep. And it took me a, a, several seconds to stand there going, 
are my eyes seeing this? Is that well, really what I think is happening over here? Well, well Mark, I mean, <laughs> the act of waking up at the middle in the middle of the night in your castle, mm-hmm. the safety yeah. of your abode, and walking, you know, to your comfortable your kitchen, and there's this this alien sitting there sleeping. Mm-hmm. The brain, and was he snoring when you w- came walking? Oh yeah, the that's what alerted me to the fact that there was somebody over there. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Like, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you get, I you get a bedroom and I hear, and I'm like, what? And I saw a movement, and I'm like, but I kept walking towards the kitchen. I'm like, looking at this chair as I go, you know? <laughs> oh, crap! <laughs> what? It's such an <laughs> awesome thing, dude. It's such an awesome thing that happened. I swear to you. I don't think it was all that damn awesome. But <laughs> well, no, it's the story after the fact. It's like, yes. okay, I'll, I'll, you know, well, I'll tell you this. I've only had that I can think of right now in the moment two weird situations that were not even close to what you've you've gone through. One, I was a kid walking back home sometime in the eighties from my friend's house here in Sweetwater. My car's old Pontiac was sitting out front. And as I'm walking, there's a guy sitting, holding the, the, the steering wheel. He's an old guy, maybe for me back then, maybe in his 40s. And he's playing with the steering wheel. And I swear to you, have you ever seen like a um, perfect movie um, hobo, um, the way they're dressed with the that it's like brown rags that uh-huh. just drape over that whole. He basically looked like that, and I'm walking. My dad's inside, probably taking a nap, and my mom's in the kitchen. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm and I see this guy in my dad's car. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I went in past the car. The guy didn't even pay attention. He's like trying to drive. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this guy's trying to steal the car in broad daylight. And I, I, I went to my dad. I said, Dad, there's someone in your car sitting in your driver's seat. And he was in his underwear. He got up and he ran out the door in his underwear. And he said, get out of the car. Oh, get out of the car. The guy was stumbling. He was drunk. And he went down the canal and mm-hmm. faded away. So that was something that yeah. closely, but what you yeah. have, what happened with you? Oh boy. Well, I worked in casinos long enough to know that when someone's intoxicated or when someone's been drinking, they can react in several different ways. And this dude's dead asleep. I don't know how he's going to react. So I figure let the County Mounties do their job and we just get out. He wasn't a threat to us. He wasn't a threat to anybody but himself in mm-hmm. his current state. But we totally. didn't know that. So I figure just get out of there, get out of the kitchen, get out of the house, and let them do their job. And it all worked out for everybody. Now, what happened to him after they took him away, I don't know. I, I know they will keep you a minimum of 12 hours. Yeah. The cop said 24. Mm-hmm. I don't know why he said that, and I don't know how long they kept him. But I know that if you're intoxicated, they will keep you a minimum of 12 hours. And um, from there, I don't know. I'll go out on a limb. He was in his 20s, maybe pushing 30. Mm -hmm. Thereabouts. No, he wasn't that old. He was early 20s. Okay. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to tell you what led up to him laying on the couch. And I'm sure you've already thought about it. Mm -hmm. Or correct me if I'm wrong. Have you thought about it? Yeah, I, I like I said, I think I kind of think that he was at a party at somebody's house locally mm-hmm. and, you know, stumbled out to do whatever and got lost. This is what I think. Mm. Get this. I think he was at a party locally, just like you're saying, mm-hmm. got hammered like nobody's business, mm-hmm. obviously. And then him and he he or his friends and his ride were taking off, he got in the car, and they played a a, a joke on him and said, all right, here, you're at home, and he walked up, and then they took off. I guess anything's possible. However, however, those would not be his friends if they did that. Well, no doubt. Yeah, but 
it kind of because there's no car there. No, no vehicle. But you know what? We live in a suburban neighborhood. So there are homes. I mean, good grief. Just in our little cul-de-sac here, there's, oh, what, 12, maybe 14 homes right just within rock throwing distance. So okay. God only knows. I mean, he could have come from anywhere. And then we've got two cross streets. One cross street comes into our cul-de-sac about halfway down our little road that leads into the circle of the cul-de-sac. And then we've got another main road uh, about a block past that. So, I mean, he could have come from any direction. But, yeah, I guess somebody could have dropped him off just trying to get rid of him. Or he could have got booted out of a party or something like that. I or. Mean, God only knows. Or but, they, he could have said, that's my house, to the car that dropped him off. Yeah, that's po quite possible. And the funny thing is that it can't be that his house has the same steps going up like yours does and the same door and the same. So he basically was on automatic. Oh, he was hammered. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind, but no doubt in my mind, he was hammered. You wow. know, just, just, just by the amount of time it took them to wake him up. So, because I mean, they were shaking him and not gently, they were shaking him and you got cops are looking up at each other. Geez, you believe this guy and, you know, shoving and pushing on the dude and, you know, another cop says, uh, th these your shoes? And we're like, no, I've never seen them before, you know. So he, he took his shoes off as he well. Took his shoes off, yeah. He, well, he didn't <laughs> He didn't break anything. He didn't take anything. They patted him down. He had one or two things on him that weren't ours. But he didn't break anything. He didn't take anything. He just stumbled in and passed out in, the, in, in my wife's recliner. And that was the biggest crime, according to her. Nobody sits in her recliner unless you're sick, lame, or lazy. Well, not um, even lazy. You better be bleeding. Time to disinfect, you know? <laughs> oh, that, that was done that night. I mean, before we went back to bed, that would that her coverlet was often in the washing machine. It's been we, tainted. <laughs> yeah, we fell asleep to the sounds of the washer going chunka 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 chunka. And how much of the after all that happened and you guys went back to bed, how long I mean the conversation had to have been can oh, you believe the crap that just yeah. happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The next morning, we both fell asleep. Um, uh, probably <laughs> five in the morning. Went back to bed about five. Fell asleep. Oh, I my noon, You know, Saturday. Now that. <laughs> and the conversation has still not stopped. We're still talking about it. Well, uh, dude, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But if I were you, I would go down to the local supermarket and buy a fruit cake and ship it to the guy and say thank you for the memories. No, I don't want to know nothing him uh, about, know. about him. I <laughs> just, you know, hope that he does the right thing from now on and maybe learn something from it because I mean, you know, he, he the cop asked us if one of you was armed. I'm like, yeah, and I'm somebody's going to get hurt doing this and he's like, yeah, yeah, we know. And uh Hopefully they'll tell him how lucky he was that there are people out there that would shoot first and ask questions later. And rightfully so it's you broke into their house. I mean, a hundred and 20%. Yeah. And by the way, you know, what's scary about that. So that couldn't, okay. If that happened here, mm -hmm. not good because oh, yeah. well, there's redundancies that I've set up. Well, and if, if somebody appears, that's not good. And that's where I was just going to go. There could have been a completely different outcome if he'd have been coming through the door when I was heading for the kitchen. Then there might have been rounds down range. But, you know, as it was, he was absolutely no threat. So, yeah, it didn't, it, it didn't need anything like that. So, wow. Yeah. And. To be honest, we I can't afford to buy her a new recliner, and she likes that one. So <laughs> I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't want to turn this to the macabre, but there's a movie by Quentin Tarantino, um, which is called The Hateful Eight. Mm -hmm. And it all revolves around a cabin in the middle of Montana or something like that during winter in the 1800s. And there, there's a wagon that's going as a pit stop to that cabin um and they're transporting uh what's this guy's name that did uh escape from new york city 
Oh, uh, um, uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell's in it, and mm. um, so is Samuel L. Jackson yeah. and a bunch. Well, they're transporting this gang leader, and she's notorious to hang. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it is that the whole movie, it's a great movie, the whole movie is them transporting, um, reaching that place, and when they get there, unbeknownst to the uh, bounty hunters, all the people inside that place are part of her gang that wow. have replaced the original people in that tavern, let's say, um, and are acting like part of the staff. And so the whole thing is that, you know, they're trying to get her free by tricking them. And it's a great movie. But anyways, in that movie, there's a recliner where one of the previous staff guys were sitting or one of the owners was sitting in a recliner and there was a, uh, like some sort of um, thing uh, draped over it, uh, cloth or whatnot, blanket. But when they finally lift the blanket, there's a huge freaking bullet hole and blood, you mm-hmm. know, splattered all over the place that I had used to cover it. Uh, I was just thinking that if things would have turned in the bad direction. Well, yeah, uh, as it sat right there, I got on the phone. She grabbed the equalizer. So she was armed. I was not. But I didn't think it. I okay for security, yes, because like I say, you don't know how a drunk is going to react. Mm-hmm. But um, I at the moment didn't think it it warranted it, but I'm glad she had it out. Oh, yeah. and to be honest, it's on her side of the bed, so you know, she's. Well, I've seen her qualification targets. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, so I mean, you know, honestly, I, um, I am I am not married to a sh- to a to a reserved individual. I'm not married to someone who jumps up on a chair uh, when she sees a mouse or has me kill the spiders. Mm -hmm. Quite the opposite. I mean, she'll go charging in and stomp that sucker flat before you even know there was one crawling across the floor. Right. So she can take care of herself. I am not worried about her at all in that regard. But the situation just didn't warrant it. So, you know. Well, of course, but and just we're just sheer, glad everything turned out the way it did. I mean, just the sheer fact of, of crossing the border of the door. In fact, yeah. to be honest with you, mm-hmm. even standing on the steps in front in the middle of the night is is already crossing a line, but it's not the line. No, it's not the line. And around here, they have to be in your house and be a threat. And believe me, like I said, if he'd have just been coming through the door, I'd have dove over her. And grabbed it. Believe me, uh, that yeah, would have so, been a completely different outcome because that is a, a different situation entirely. So, well, over. So I here, guess I did have a little bit of situational awareness. I was just, I was just too blown away by the whole situation. I mean, it's almost like, well, I guess you could, but you can't write this. It's like, who gets up at one thirty in the morning to go shut off the heater and get a glass of water to somebody snoring in their living room on the recliner? I yeah, mean, in their wife's recliner, no doubt. And I think that was the biggest crime. If he'd have been passed out on the couch, that'd have been one thing. But I mean, she's still mad about the recliner. <laughs> it's like, that's my chair. Get out of there. <laughs> she don't let her kids sit in her chair. <laughs> Boy, I mean. So uh, over here, uh, one one other time, just a few years back before my father passed, um, I was in this room, mm-hmm. and it was like 12, 1230. My dad was in the other room, fell asleep. It's it's midnight. Yeah. And um, right outside my window is um, a ha- um, the yard, but it faces the, um, the walk, sidewalk. And um, there's a fence, of course, that borders, chain link fence. And I'm butted up against the window on the bed. And I hear a rustling outside and the metal. And I look through the window. I pull the blinds and I look and I see this guy reaching into the property from the sidewalk, Uh grabbing a rocking chair, which was my grandmother's rocking chair Uh that sits in my porch, lifting it up. And I didn't see much in it because it was a little bit to the side. I got up, walked out open the door 
and looked, and the guy was holding the chair in his hand, walking down the sidewalk away from the house. And I said, he was crossing the street. Uh -huh. And I said, hey, you, stop right there. And he stopped. <laughs> like, oh, shit, now what? <laughs> and I said, that's our rocking ship. Bring it back right now. And by the way, just to explain, I can't lift the gate uh, open because it has a lock. I would have to go into the kitchen, grab the keys, come yeah. back. And do. in other words, by that time, anything he could leave. Yeah. He comes walking back towards me with a chair. <laughs> and he's holding the chair in front of me. And I tell him, put it down. And he puts it down. And I said, you're, you're stealing from us. What's your pro? And he says, I'm sorry. I was just borrowing it. I was going to bring it back. That was his excuse. The yeah. guy's got to have a, yeah, a, a few screws loose. Mm hmm Meanwhile, my dad got up once again in his underwear, walks up, and he says, What the? Why are you screaming at 12 30 at night? What is wrong with you? At me. Uh -huh. The guy is standing there watching my father chewing my ass out. And I'm looking at my dad. And I said, Dad, he just stole our chair. And he, he looked and he looked and he says, Call the police right now. And he walked back in. <laughs> I called the police and I said, you stand right there. The police are coming for you right now. Mm -hmm. And he's standing there and you can see him starting to edge. <laughs> and, and, and he started to slowly, I said, stop. But this time he had courage and he kept walking, walking. Uh -huh. And he started walking down the street again. And, and then the cops came after he had gone and uh -huh. they went pursuing him. I never heard anything of it again, but yeah. the guy had to have, a bunch of screw, screws loose because there's yeah. no way that um well what do you want with a rocking chair anyway he yeah he had to be a little bit on the yeah you know yeah well anyway that's uh so that was our excitement how was your friday night <laughs> it was just weird man that is super weird wait a second did we hang out that evening at all yeah, yeah. So and then I, I split from the hangout. Everything was fine and normal. And then we went on to the adventure. We went on to bed and stuff happened overnight. And then, uh, you know, woke up the next morning and it's like, did that really happen? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yes, that really happened. So, you know, that was, uh, it was, it was an adventure. I'm here to tell you. So, um, it sure was, you know, but it, it, I just, I really just hope that they impress on this guy how things could have turned out because I mean, all the pieces were in place and if he would have made the wrong move, you know, somebody was going to the hospital and, um, you know, so oh just, yeah and, and nobody wants that no and nobody exactly nobody wants that and nobody wants that on their conscience because you know deserved or not yeah you know do you really want to be thinking about that kind of thing for the rest of your life jesus you know? no you don't want that on on your yeah. your conscious i mean exactly. sometimes sometimes there's situation look if you're not given an op there are law there are rules mm -hmm. and they go beyond in my in my opinion law they yeah. go beyond every. They go to survival and protection mm -hmm. of of your. Sure. And it's it's a very distasteful situation, but mm -hmm. you, I mean, if they if people want by force to um, do harm, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. But like I said, I think it was just. I, I think this guy's gonna. He's probably already forgotten about it. Or maybe he's still dealing with a little bit of embarrassment. Oh, he, he's got to be still dealing with it. Um, and uh, just maybe, you know, I hope a lesson was learned. I don't, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not naive enough to say maybe he learned his lesson because I don't think that folks who have one encounter learn a lesson from that first encounter. But, uh, you know, what can you say? 
Um, it's it's a shocking thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm glad you shared it. I think this is going to be a phenomenal um, episode. And incidentally, <laughs> I don't know that it's going to make a, a, a run for uh, uh, for um, the um, uh, what you call Adam Smasher episode, but I think it's right up there. I think because, it's going to surpass the Adam Smasher. <laughs> well, because you have it vividly in your memory. <laughs> Oh man. So um last week when we did the show, and by the way, folks, you could catch us every Tuesday um at 9 30 Eastern or 6 30 West Coast time. Yep. And um what's that? 6 30 Pacific. Six six thirty Pacific. Um on Spreaker here on YouTube. Um, I'm sorry, here on YouTube and on Spreaker. We uh, have our shows up there, so you can go check that out. Uh, Trampled Underfoot Podcast. Uh, but now we have a website, and it's trampledunderfootpodcast.com, and you can catch our past, um, episode. past episodes there as well yeah. by pressing the Wayback Machine. So we have uh, checked them out. Uh, we have a lot of fun, and this was exceptional thus far. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think it's going to rate higher than uh... – than the Adam Smasher episode. I like the Adam Smasher that episode. Was, that was the imaginings of a five-year-old kid. This is the nonsensical ravings of a 58-year-old man standing in the middle of his living room going, am I really seeing what I'm thinking? Or in the middle of his kitchen going, am I really seeing this? Is this really happening to me? Nah, it can't be. Um, <laughs> it, it's crazy, dude. Um, so, you know, in the previous episode, we never got to the subject that we were going to um, that we, I previously wanted to throw at you. Unfortunately, I didn't. Um, I reserved it, but I didn't reserve the full thing that I had set up. But I do have. Um, I don't know how how we're gonna transition into this, but we do it effortless, effortlessly. Um, anyhow, the magic of post production. I have some wisdom quotes, and just to see <laughs> what you um, what you think about them or thoughts and whatnot. Okay. How's that sound? Sounds like a good one to me. Wisdom quote number one, never fall asleep in a place you're not sure of. If you don't know where you are, don't fall asleep. <laughs> and, and tell me if you agree with these philosophies or not. Okay. Okay. So, and, and also if you know who, who the quote is from, that'd be good. If not, you know, I could, okay. I could. All right. So here's one. It's better to remain silent at the risk of being thought a fool than to talk and remove all doubt of it. I've heard that attributed to a couple of people. I believe it, and I've used it a few times. I've heard it attributed to Mark Twain, and I've heard it attributed to uh, Will Rogers. Okay. That's uh, your uh, Maurice Switzer. Maurice, okay. All Mr. right. Mr. Goose, her book. Okay. Or yeah, Mrs. There, Goose, her, her book. Yep. Yeah, there is a, a thing called, I've heard it either called the... Uh, the Mark Twain syndrome or the Winston Churchill syndrome. Someone will come up with something brilliant and you can't remember who said it. So it must have been either Mark Twain or Winston Churchill. That's funny. So about, I would say easily a third of the things they are credited with saying they never said. So, so but I had never heard that name before, but yeah, I, I, I do agree with it because we all have the uh, we all have the ability to close our mouths. Some of us, it just takes us a little bit longer to learn that than others, you know. <laughs> Count your age by friends, not years. Count your life by smiles, not tears. I don't know if I get. I don't know if I believe that or not. Who I don't know who said it. John Lennon. John Lennon. I don't know that I believe that. I mean, you got to count a chronological age, of course, and here's the practical mind kicks in. But I know several people who have relatively few friends, but they're quite happy that way and don't mm -hmm. see themselves as suffering or lacking in any way. Well, wait a sec. So, so what did you understand from that? As far um, as its meaning? Basic, well. You want me to repeat it? Yeah, go ahead, please. Count your age by friends, 
mm-hmm. not years. And then count your life by smiles and not tears. That's easy sentiment to say. And I think that's part of, I think that's part of human nature. We tend to forget unless it's a super tragedy, unless it is a tragedy, we tend to forget a lot of the bad things and remember the good things. Like I can sit down with anybody I was in that who was in the army and I can swap military stories back and forth all night long. And I can recount a lot of fun and a lot of good times and the people I knew and some of the crazy stuff we used to do and some of the crazy stuff that happened to us. But you tend to forget the bad stuff, you know, like physical training tests and pulling guard duty and maybe even KP and just the, the general BS for lack of a better term that turns a lot of people away from the military and makes people want to get out. But you tend to not remember that stuff when you're recounting and having, you know, telling swapping C stories or doing whatever. Yeah. So, but I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I agree with, um, I don't know. I guess a man in his position, it was easy for him to say. Yeah. He's got poetic license and, uh, well, he was a songwriter for crying out loud. He's used to thinking in those terms. They sound like lyrics and they could have been lyrics. Here's another one. Okay. It's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. No, I don't know who said that. Aristotle. Aristotle. To entertain a thought without accepting it. Now, I don't think I agree with that either. I agree with that one. I I'll don't tell, agree with that. I, I, I think it comes down to ego and being an opinionated person. I don't think well, education level has anything to do with it. What he's trying to say there, and 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 you tell me what you think, is that, um, imagine uh, imagine you're sitting uh, at a at a table, and someone comes to you with a concept or an idea, mm-hmm. um, or various people. Some you're going it's, it's right. Some you're going to agree with. Some you might not, and whatever. There's a whole you know range sure. of things, but. You can entertain the information brought to you, um, even though you may not accept it. Your right. your willingness to listen mm-hmm. um, and challenge your held beliefs mm-hmm. is a sign of intelligence. And I agree with me personally. I agree with that because if what I believe is strong, and I'm and I'm brought, you know, if I, what I believe is correct, better said and I'm brought information that counters it, I can easily, you know, if not, I need to adjust my beliefs. If my intent is true, I need to adjust my beliefs. So I I agree with that particular quote. And I can see where you're going. And in some instances and situations, I could agree with it. But in a lot of them, maybe I don't agree. Like, because I mean, like well, for instance, uh, a person who is not educated. I mean, my grandfather was, uh, I, my grandfather who taught me most of what I know about woodworking. I, he never went to high school. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if he made it into junior high because they were a farm family. They were expected to work on the farm. Mm-hmm. And, but he had been a carpenter for most of his adult life. Mm-hmm. And if somebody came in, talking to him about carpentry and he might entertain what they were saying, but if he knew it was wrong, he knew it was wrong. Oh, well, they're not, he, he, you know, that's not, so So, that doesn't enter into it. I don't think that education level has as much to do with it as common sense. So if, if he's saying common sense is, you know, a portion of that, then okay, fine. But I mean, you know, you can have, if somebody comes up talking smack about, no, you don't frame with two by fours, you frame with one by fours. I'm not even going to entertain that thought. It's going to be, what the heck are you talking about? Oh, no, but we're not, so let's not, 
so okay so let me let me try to 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 do this so let's not um sort of divide it down to its basic you know right. any everyday mm -hmm. um you know situations but in 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 a level of pondering uh a little bit deeper let's say because he was a philosopher mm -hmm. um if somebody if you put your shoes in his sandals because that's probably what they wore um he would have say another person come to him and say i believe x y and z contradicting him and he's saying that um that he would entertain the contradictions and face them and see you and, know what comes to okay. what but not you know i i, I I guess I get what you're saying that you're saying that if you're willing to even entertain what the person's saying, even if you don't agree with it and you can quote chapter and verse to prove the guy wrong, the fact that you entertained it means that you're an intelligent person. Okay. I would agree with that. Yeah. On that level. But if, yeah. if, if something is <clears throat> like what you explained, of course, but um, of course, then, then, then that would not be the case. Um, so I guess how we look at, at the, the thing also matters because yeah. I saw it from a different vantage point than you did. Yeah. That's yeah, I did. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, and I, I like that one. Uh, let me go through here. Um, here we go. Any fool can know. The point is to understand. Yes, I, I agree with that 100%. I do agree with that 100%. I mean, we all carry around useless bits of information in our head. And we know, but we don't really understand. Mm -hmm. it, it's okay to know tab A goes into slot B. Mm -hmm. And if that's all you do for the rest of your life, that's fine. Maybe that's enough to get you by. But that doesn't mean you understand the bigger picture and you don't understand why tab A has to go into slot B and why you can't put it in top slot C just once. You know, so yeah, you can go through the motions and know, but do you really understand? Yeah, Albert I, Einstein. I was that Einstein? Okay. Um, well, they didn't call him a smart man for nothing. Yeah, I, I agree with that sentiment as well. Um, here's another one. <sighs> Wait, let me actually read it because I was gonna paraphrase it. The unexplained life is not worth living or i'm sorry i botched that up the unexamined life is not worth living i'll agree with that i'll agree with that a little bit of introspection who am i what am i doing where have i been where am i going yeah i'd agree with that you do have to sometimes just sit down be quiet and take stock yeah especially if you plan on growing I mean, you know, the idea of because the idea of of existing and not questioning things and not pondering and not, you know, the, the that idea is um it's on the level of I hate to say but animal um it, well it's close, yeah, but you know people, we both know people who will just plod along through life and not even make an attempt you know um they don't care they don't you know uh, and and i see that becoming more and more the case to where it's i can do no wrong it's all ego i can do no wrong you're in my way you're the one that's wrong because i didn't get my way i didn't get what i want and you know it's um you do have to look inwards. I mean, every time my grandfather told me once, and I don't know where he got it from, but he says, every time you feel like pointing your finger at somebody else, imagine a mirror in front of that finger. You know? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that. You know, yeah. you need to, you need to just kind of every once in a while stop and re-examine or examine what you're doing, where you are, what you've got, who you are, why you're where you are. You know, and if you don't like it, do something about it. If you're not willing to do something about it, that must mean you enjoy it. Because if you didn't, you'd want to get out or change something. So, last one angry people are not always wise. 
Oh, big time. We say stuff when in, we say stuff in anger that we would never think of saying. We also say things in anonymity that we would never think about saying to a person face to face, you know, flexing your keyboard muscles and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, when you get angry, you're depending upon what kind of a person you are, you may or may not be rational. Yeah, you're not. And we're that. strategic necessarily. Yeah. Because um, in an argument, let's say, and an argument for me is not a screaming match. An argument for me has always been, it can be that. Mm -hmm. um, but an argument to me has always been defined as, and it's defined as such, as people with um, varying ideas going back and forth um in the attempt to reach an accord um the See, truth of a thing to, to me, me that's discussion that's or debate to me an argument is raised voices and some passion and emotion involved to no. me just the exchange of ideas in an attempt to either make a point or get or receive a point maybe change somebody's mind to me that's a discussion or a debate that's an, uh, an argument is when there's emotion involved and voices start getting raised People start see, thinking things personally. See, I, I can I I I I understand that to be the case, mm -hmm. but my when I when I use the word argument, um and in, in my thinking, I'm using it in, in the case of a debate or a back and forth to mm -hmm. find some clarity. Um, because you're putting forth arguments um to your position and the person is coming, but within the within the the sphere of of reaching the truth of the matter the truth right. of the matter in my opinion is because if you continuously in an argument or a debate let's say um to meet halfway with this um the if you win a debate argument etc with faults with something that's not true you take home the prize of winning but you've not won to me and my because you continue believing in a lie the highest thing in my opinion is to in the highest thing is to reach the truth of the thing regardless mm -hmm. of whether i was comfortable with my position or not mm -hmm. i may scratch and claw to try to salvage my position but and the that's, idea, and that's but, when it becomes an argument right well sc scratching and clawing i don't mean well, I, I get it. I don't mean anything physical either. I, I get what you're trying to say, but that's when emotion kicks in. And to me, that that's when the debate changes from an argument or from no, a no, no. debate or a let discussion me, to an argument. No, 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 no. No, let me correct that for a second because um the terms, when I mean scratch and claw, um, I'm, I'm being like creative with artistic with it. But what I mean is um, you may, let's say you and I, you may say A, B, and C, and this is what it is. And I'll listen to that and say, damn, that's freaking good. Um, but I'm going to think, well, wait a second. Where is there a pocket? So I'm going to come back at you to see if right. you can overcome my object. So right. um, we might, so I use scratch and claw. We might scratch and claw to get to that point. But right. long story short, the, the, the main thing, and you know what? Passions do get heated. Yeah. Which is, but when it becomes, there's a, a line that, when one crosses right it's become now um emotional right. as opposed to exactly and yeah. to me that's the point where it quits being a debate or a discussion and becomes an argument because yeah. facts be damned facts are out the window now it's emotion because yeah. one person feels slighted or attacked or they just don't want to admit that they were wrong or they feel themselves somehow humiliated when emotion takes over and facts be damned, facts are out the window, then you've gone into an argument from a discussion or a debate to me. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I agree with you. We're always balancing a, a, us human beings mm -hmm. with reason and the emotional thing socially. You know, if we're slighted in a social situation, all of a sudden that's a wound that we've taken. And, you know, we're like, whoa, 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 we've been attacked. And then it can get vicious from there. But humans are always balancing between the rationale, sure, you know, of, of the truth of a matter 
and then the emotional thing and and the language that's used in conversation or right. argument or discussion is uh as if a word is said that reaches the other guy's ears that creates an offense and maybe the confusions can occur and it can lead to all out war as well so Humans, right. unfortunately, we, we have to deal with this, yeah? But we're talking about the passion and the emotion that gets involved in. Quick, mm -hmm. what was that quote again? Um, let's Going back to it. Angry. Angry people are not always wise. There you go. Mm -hmm. And when somebody starts feeling a little bit threatened, that's when they start making mistakes and they turn a debate into an argument. Yeah. So or, I don't... or... Well, last bit about this, and I'll tell you who, who did it. Or that that you just said, or on the other side, the in, in position mm -hmm. uh, of a point of view in an argument via force right. is also um, an aggressive. In other words, you can impose without allowing opposing you know, views come in, and you could push for your point of view, but you're not looking for the highest level of of you know of an you're argument not, which is truth right. you're not exactly truth is out the window see and that's something that folks a lot of folks won't even acknowledge let alone admit to and that is the truth is neutral the truth has no agenda the truth has no personality it mm -hmm. just is mm -hmm. and it's a case of the sky is blue you can give me a million reasons why you think that's wrong, but it doesn't alter the fact that it is. Yeah, the, no. the quote came from Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. Actually, well, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. I agree with that 100%. And here's another one. Okay. That's the final one. I did say that that one was going to be the final one, but this okay. one's the final one. Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. How do you feel about that? As a word nerd, I can agree with that. Because to me, hate, you know, words mean things. And we throw that word around a lot these days. And the word hate, a lot of the sting has been removed from it. And a lot of the thought and emotion behind the use of the word has been removed from it. You know, now if anybody is slighted in any way at all, well, they're a hate monger or they're, they're using hate speech or this, that, or the other. We've taken the true definition of the word away from it. And that's, when when you are so filled with hate and rage towards someone, something, or some situation, you have lost control. You are you are not in control at all of your thoughts, of your emotions, of anything. You've lost control. So I would agree with that statement. I don't know. I don't who said know who it? Said it, but I would agree with that one. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. He was also called a smart man for a reason. There's plenty of, of these um, quotes, and uh, I wanted to share them. I had uh, a bunch of other things prepared last time, but um, we can revisit that because uh, we, we didn't um, – well, we had this going on. so We had a little story <laughs> about a man named, I don't know. I never even learned the guy's name. It was just a fun weekend. Well, here's here's one last one. Okay. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. That's true, too. I've heard that. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yep. I will agree with that. I will agree with that. You know? Yeah. It's a, a lot of to a, a lot of tude. A lot of it is attitude, and that's where I was going. I just decided to verbicate and make my own words. Um, <laughs> I'm the designated verbicator on Trampled Underfoot podcast. We um, a, a lot of it depends on attitude, and if somebody says you're doing cruddy work, 
you can either, I mean, they may not be tactful about it. They may be angry about it or what have you, but you need mm -hmm. to be able to back up a little bit, take stock and decide, are you doing absolutely the best you can with the tools and training and knowledge and skills that you have? And if not, you can turn that in any direction. It's entirely up to you, mm -hmm. you know? So, but if you start feeling inferior, well, how come John can get 10 out a day? Well, maybe John's just a little bit more experienced than you. You know, how come he can make that and I can't? Well, how long has he been at it? And not only that, maybe he's got all the expensive tools. Well, and about 20 years of experience. <laughs> you, you know, know the... <laughs> so, so, yeah, I will, I will agree with that. Um, it, it, and it, it was a hard lesson for me to learn, but it is the truth. What other people think of me is just flat out none of my business because it's their thoughts. I can only be the best me I know how to be. Mm -hmm. And there is one living person right now who I think is in a position to tell me whether I'm doing it right or wrong. And, um, you know, she keeps me on an even keel. And, uh, you know, everybody else, I don't know. It's none of my business what they think. I, I, I'm going to have to... Um agree with that because at the end of the day um you can only control your experience exactly and mm -hmm. you can only control you and it that it all dovetails into there is my business and there is none of my business and it took me over 50 years to figure out just how little of everything that goes on in the world is really my business so well you know, <laughs> if I'll just tell you this as we exit this uh, episode, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We um, we do these every Tuesday. So, um, well, except today, which is a Monday, but it'll come out on Tuesday. Right. So, um, yeah, we have a great old time. Check us out. Trampled Underfoot Podcast dot com. You can check out all our episodes. Easy click. Sit back and listen to the episodes. We have a lot of different topics. Um I was going to say something, but then I got into saying where we can, they can find us. Well, that's um, quite all right. We should also mention, however, that trampled underfoot podcast.com is sponsored by Steve Nealon over at Harneal media webmaster to the stars. You thinking about a website, go check out Steve Nealon over there at Harneal media.com. That's H A R N E A L media.com. He'll square you right away. All right. Well, I'm going to have to ponder this one out the door because I think it's time for us to say nighty night. Yep. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for coming over here and hanging with us in the YouTube chat. We got a long list of people. And as my wife said over there in the chat, stay out of your, her recliner <laughs> and all is well. <laughs> have a good week, y'all. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all take care. <laughs>